Good afternoon, everyone. This is Makar Mali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 16th, 2021, recorded on 2.20 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for two or three more named storms to be forming across the tropical Atlantic over the next several days, and we'll take a look at where they might be heading over the next five or six days. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have post-tropical cyclone Nicholas located over far eastern Texas and central Louisiana. This has been bringing a lot of heavy rainfall to the area during the last several days and will continue to bring rainfall at least for the next two or three days as this kind of just sits in this area. This will finally begin to get kicked northward along this uh, front that is coming in right in here. And this front will eventually catch this thing and move it towards the north and east. For the time being, a lot of heavy rainfall is still expected for portions of eastern Texas and Louisiana, all the way up into Mississippi and Alabama. And the threat for tornadoes as well extends uh, away from this as well into Louisiana and even the Florida Panhandle here. Uh, so again, just kind of keep that in mind and check back with your local media officials and Weather Service Office for uh, direct impacts to your specific location. We are also watching here Invest Area 96L and Invest Area 95L in a new tropical wave that is now just coming off the coast of Africa. This wave will be moving northwestward during the next several days and could impact the Cabo Verde Islands. 95L could be a threat to the Lesser Antilles and the Greater Antilles during the next several days. And 96L will likely be beginning to scoot off towards the north and east with time. So we can see that here represented in the graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center. This is Invest Area 95L, 96L, and our newly tropical wave over here, and post-tropical cyclone Nicholas right over here. So looking firstly here from west to east, we'll be looking at Invest Area 96L first. And today, there is a little bit more background cyclonic vorticity in this environment, uh, and we can really notice that with the low level circulation that you can kind of see these low level cloud fields moving on the southern side here they're moving directly to the east and you get that uh, kind of east to west flow on the northern side and you can kind of see how this is fitting in with a circulation so there is indeed a circulation that is formed in here but the problem now is the lack of convection that is near the surface center and there is just a lack of any convection and the problem for that and you can very clearly see the trough that's in here is also creating a lot of shear and we can see that a lot of these cloud elements are getting blown these storms that go up in their cloud tops in the upper levels get pushed eastward and this indicates that we have some west or southwest shear impinging on our system right now we can also see here, if we zoom out to the water vapor satellite imagery, that we can very clearly see the shear that is occurring across the storm right now. And this is not going to help at all during the next several days. And in fact, here, if we look at the GFS, go to the uh, 850 millibar vorticity, we can see how broad this actual area of circulation really is. It's very broad and nondescript, really. And if we jump to the 200 millibar wind, we can see that, again, the wind pattern isn't really all that favorable. If we back this out during the next several days, we can see that the upper level wind environment just doesn't really get all that favorable. Now, there will be some baroclinic forcing, and this is likely when this becomes a remnant circulation, a, a remnant tropical circulation, and now is more of a mid-latitude cyclone. And we can see that here in the 850 millibar vorticity, this is indeed beginning to form that rotation in cyclonic vorticity, but this is likely now becoming a post-tropical cyclone. Uh, but it is interesting that in, in this, we talked about this yesterday, there's going to be a lot of complex interactions between 96L and 95L, even though the two necessarily aren't co-located together, there will be differences in the steering flow uh, aloft in the mid and upper levels depending on how strong 96L eventually ends up getting. And again, we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Now, the overall steering complex for the next several days will be generally carrying 96L up into the north and east. And this could get awfully closer to portions that were impacted, uh, portions of, you know, 
the Canadian Maritimes and Atlantic Canada <clears throat> that were impacted by Hurricane Larry uh, only a few short days ago. So this kind of becomes one of those things where you just kind of got to watch your local forecast and watch the model trends. But there is some concern that some impacts may arise from this in the form of a mid-latitude circulation. This probably would not be a tropical cyclone here because of the very cool sea surface temperatures. And this would be just moving way too fast to hold a true surface circulation in that area. So I'll be watching that. We'll come back to this here in a minute and show you how this all interacts uh, with Invest Area 95L. Now, speaking of 95L, during the day today and, and really over the last several days, we've not really seen the storm materialize as uh, we would expect. And this delayed development has led to a number of questions, not only in terms of the future track of the system, but inevitably what might end up coming of this down the road, if anything. And today we can see that in the visible satellite imagery, Again, there's no real clear surface circulation in this area. There's just a broad monsoon trough. Now, again, there is some hints that a low-level circulation may be trying to form. You can kind of see that you have some of the low-level cloud elements uh, that are kind of pushing down on the storm right now, kind of coming like that. And some of this flow is indicating that we may have a broad cyclonic you know, circulation in here, but it's not likely not closed and well-defined enough to even think about classifying this. And the other problem is what convection is there? There's really none and there is some, but not enough. We also notice this interesting feature here. I'm not sure if this is an outflow boundary or if this is just a gravity wave propagating from storms off towards the east here. Either way, it is interesting. Um, but we notice that if we jump up to the water vapor satellite imagery, we also notice that 95L is located in a presence of at least a semi-dry environment in the mid and upper levels. We can see that, again, all this mid-level um, kind of gray and almost black in here, this is all mid-level and upper-level dry air in the environment. And because there is an attempt at, again, a surface cyclonic vorticity here, a surface low here, this air is going to be drawn in on the northern side and wrapping completely around. And we can see that even here, there's not a lot of moisture that's located in here. A lot of upper level, you know, kind of low and mid level clouds here that are kind of obscuring. But there is actually some mid level dry air in the boundary layer, which we can't really see here. But this is working in and also helping to kind of stop storms from going up. And again, Another look at that here is just some of the arc clouds that we're seeing. Some of these arc-like clouds are indicating outflow boundaries, and we don't really want that for tropical cyclone genesis. We want air coming in, not going away. So we talked about the overall evolution of 96L, and we kind of teased how that might impact 95L. Now, this is where things get complicated, and to jump up to this, we'll go to the 500 millibar vorticity, or 500 millibar heights, actually, height anomalies. So again, the reds here, this is all high pressure, and the blues here, this is all low pressure. So we have a pretty stout ridge across the North Atlantic currently, which is generally forcing 95L generally westward. Now, in the mid-levels, the steering flow is a little bit out of the northwest because there is an actual weakness down here but in the low levels it's just kind of following the trade wind and the trade wind is generally carrying this from east to west okay now we also have what we'll be developing out here invest area 96l and this could become a real player because if we kind of move here now you start to see the fingerprints basically of or the dna really of our two systems this is 96 and this is 95 and both of these now are undergoing, um, you know, undergoing cyclogenesis. Now, the storm up to the north, 96L, is undergoing extratropical genesis. And, of course, 95L, this would be purely tropical because it's in the tropical latitudes. Now, the one thing here is, again, this steering component would generally favor 95L to turn more towards the north and west. And this would actually be a good escape route out to sea if this pattern came to verify. 
Now, this is suggesting, again, on the GFS that we have a storm here by Sunday afternoon and a robust storm at that because this is showing up at 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. So this is not the low levels. This is the mid and upper level steering flow. So the fact that this is showing up here indicates that this is a, a, a robust vortex in the mid and upper levels. Now, again, what's going to be happening, though, is 96L kind of maintains itself and hangs around during the, the, the next several days. We saw this evolution exactly a couple of days ago when we were talking about this on the, on the European forecast, actually. So this has actually caved a little bit to the European solution that we have 96L kind of staying around well, we also have an attempt at a building ridge to the north. That ridge doesn't really matter because of the fact that this is still a pretty strong vortex here. And whatever, if 95L is actually strong enough, it is more likely to be turning northward during this time and following in the path here of 96L. And to further complicate factors, we can kind of see that again, these two systems show up very clearly on the GFS, and we also have another short, uh, cutoff flow here, shortwave trough, and these two systems are here beneath this ridge. So 96L is actually trapped uh, because this is a building ridge, and 95L is just following 96L basically, and then this ridge would, or this trough here would basically kick everything out. And this is one of the solutions that is possible. If we look here at the European forecast, and we'll also jump to the 500 millibar height anomalies, we can see that once again, we have the same type of evolution. We have 96L becoming trapped underneath a building ridge to the north, and we have a developing trough here that would likely begin to pick all these systems up eventually. And if we look here at the 850 millibar vorticity, so this is the low level flow here, we notice that again, anything that's going on at this time, we have a kind of a wave axis approaching the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos and northward. But again, what part of this wave envelope actually develops? Do we even have a wave here? Do we have a storm? What happens with 96L? There's so many questions uh, and there's more questions than we have answers at this time. Now, one of the things in terms of the upper level environment and why this won't become too strong initially, well, we can actually look at this on the HWAR forecast and we'll take a look here at some of the possible solutions according to the HWAR. Now on the HWAR forecast, this is the 60 run from early this morning. So this is uh, initialized as of 2 a.m. for 11 a.m. So we'll move this out to 5 p.m. Now during the next several days, we can already kind of see what's starting up here. We have a tut, a tropical upper trosopheric trough developing over the tropical Atlantic. And Invest Area 95L is actually co-located in a pocket of some moderate shear as it is away from this upper level anticyclone uh, to its north and east. So currently, this is already experiencing a little bit of shear, not too much though that it couldn't develop, but this tut right here, this trough axis is going to be the real problem. And eventually here on the HWAR forecast, we can see how this tut actually occurs. And we can kind of see the very sharp outline of this. Now, this is actually aiding outflow to the north. So it's actually creating a diffluent flow aloft uh, on top of the storm. And that actually helps to, again, cause divergence aloft and convergence at the surface. Now on this particular run of the H wharf, we actually get a strengthening storm here. And on the H wharf forecast, what actually ends up happening is because the storm is actually able to get pretty strong here, this is a, a decent, moderately decent vortex here. This is able to actually pinch off the tut and begin to back this up a level low back off to the south and west. And then with time, this continues to further intensify and begins to significantly weaken down this tut here. And this is actually a pretty strong storm uh, during this particular time. Now, if we look here at the regular h wharf forecast, this is actually the 12Z run. Now, again, this is a pretty strong storm and you might be thinking, oh my God, you know, this is, you know, going to be, you know, worst case scenario here. Not necessarily. We'll take a look here at, at what the soundings are showing on the Euro here, or on, I'm sorry, on the h wharf. We notice that there's a pocket of some fairly high shear. I mean, you know, maximum shear of 41 knots, but you actually have shear uh, in the low and upper levels of about 20 knots. Now, 20 knots isn't necessarily the strongest. It's not 40 knots of shear, but look at where the steering component actually is. The steering flow in the mid and upper levels is actually out of the north. 
So this would actually be something that would begin to carry our storm generally towards the west and northwest during this time, avoiding the Lesser Antilles. It is possible that this happens uh, on the HWAR forecast. Again, for instance, the HMON, for what it's worth here for 95L, doesn't even have a storm, but curiously, it does actually carry this low-level circulation into the Caribbean. Now, just for sake of everything, if we were to look at what might be happening in the Caribbean, we would still have a fairly unfavorable environment. There is a tut right here, and again, this is on the GFS at least. There's a tut here and just not a lot of background cyclonic flow down here, and again, just the environmental conditions would be semi-conducive for development in the Caribbean if this gets in here. I don't really know if it's going to. And again, I, I don't think we have a clue as to what might be happening. We can look at the ensembles. And if we look here at the ensemble mean sea level pressure, we can tell that, again, we generally have storm. Uh, each one of the red numbers is where a storm could be during this time. Generally, on the 12Z GFS ensembles, we have a kind of a, a range from south to north like this, and they begin to all lift northward during time. I mean, there's not a single member that doesn't begin to kind of lift northward. And, you know, even running this out in time, all of those ensembles just move it northward. So I'm not really too worried about this. Most of the ensembles have a pretty decent understanding of what this ridge is going to do. Of course, the ridge is going to be slightly stronger than what's modeled in the forecast uh, by, you know, day five, day six. But those are things that we're going to have to iron out then. I just don't think we're skilled enough yet, truthfully, to have the answers. I think this is a very complex situation between the interaction with 96L and 95L. All right. So that being said, nothing to worry about for the time being. Again, nothing to worry about, nothing to panic about. But just keep an eye on this over the next several days. And, of course, I'll be staying on top of this as well. Anyway, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.